Good morning and thank you once again for joining me as we begin our day in the presence of the Lord. In our second reading, we see God's process of identifying with us so that he can bring about our salvation. As in the story of creation itself, water, the Holy Spirit and the spoken word of God come together and make something new. We see the ministry of Jesus begin with an act of love and a sign of God's compassion. Of course, Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He was without sin and therefore had no cause for repentance as we do. His baptism was an act by which he shows how complete his identification with us is. And later in the Gospels, we see Jesus saying to his disciples, as you will do as I have done for you. As Jesus comes up out of the water, John the Baptist says, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. The baptism of Jesus shows how complete was his dedication to following God's will and an example set also for us so that in and through our own baptism into him we may discover God's forgiveness, acceptance, healing and life eternal. As we reflect on our own baptism today, maybe renewing our sense of commission and call, May we also hear the words of our Father speaking to us by name, saying, You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. In hearing those words afresh or maybe for the first time, maybe we could renew our own determination to go forward in the ministry to which we have been called, to identify with those who are lost, and those who are crying out for wholeness and proclaim to them the good news that Jesus is alive. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This morning's psalm is Psalm 135. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord. You that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for he is gracious. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great. Our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all deeps. He it is who makes the clouds rise at the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain, and brings the wind from the storehouse. It is he who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, both human beings and animals. He sent signs and wonders into the midst of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants. He struck down many nations and killed mighty kings. Sion, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and he gave their land as a heritage to the people of Israel. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have no mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. They have no breath in their mouth. Those who make them and all who trust them shall become just like them. 
O house of Israel, bless the Lord. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. O house of Levi, bless the Lord. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, he who resides in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 33. The Lord said to Moses, Go, leave this place, you and the people who you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and go to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, or I would consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. When the people heard these harsh words, they mourned, and no one put on ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You are a stiff-necked people. If for a single moment I should go up among you, I would consume you. So now take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do to you. Therefore the Israelites stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onwards. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the Tent of Meeting, and everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the Tent of Meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, each of them, at the entrance of their tents, and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them, at the entrance of their tents. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favour in my sight. Now if I have found favour in your sight, show me your ways, so that I might know you and find favour in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favour in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people. Our canticle today is called A Song of Penitence. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, beginning at verse 15. 
as the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias his brother's wife and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptised, and when Jesus also had been baptised and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him bodily like a dove, and a voice came from heaven saying, You are my Son, my Beloved, with you, I am well pleased. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. To, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I'm going to read to you from Colin Urquhart's book, My Dear Child. And this one is called, I Am Your Father. My child, don't judge me by your human experience of a father. Your natural father was a man and failed in many ways. You were aware of his weaknesses as well as his strengths. Some people have suffered rejection at the hands of their human fathers because they were men who could not be trusted. They were unjust or unconcerned about their children. I am near to all who call on me. I am never distant. I comfort, strengthen and heal them. So I am not to be compared with any earthly father. I am not a man. There are no weak, vulnerable areas in my life. There is never inadequacy in me or inability to meet a need. I love you with my everlasting love that will never fade. It will never be withdrawn from you. As your father, I watch over your development and I am concerned to protect you from things that are dangerous and harmful to you. You haven't always heeded my warnings, so at times you have been hurt but I have always been on hand to heal you and to meet your need. Sometimes you have allowed me to do this, and at other times you have not. I never deal with you as you deserve, but only with compassion and grace. This is difficult for you to understand. I give and give, and I go on giving to you. I never come to the end of my giving. You often think to yourself, who am I that I should receive such love, that I should know the personal affection of my God? You are fearful that my love might suddenly be withdrawn and then you would feel rejected. If you were to open yourself fully to me and then I turned away, you would be devastated. But I will never treat you like that. I do not withdraw my love. 
I don't commit myself to you only for a set period of time. My commitment to you is unending, as a commitment of love must always be. Love cannot be real if it is suddenly withdrawn. I already know you, every single part of you, and yet I love you. I see what you try and hide from me, so hiding is futile. I will not stop loving you because I uncover some unsavoury part of your character. My love for you is real. It never depends on who you are, but on who I am. So let's pray. Creator God, we thank you for your infinite power and love. We thank you, Lord, that through our own baptism, you have washed us clean and that you continue to inspire and refresh us with your presence. Lord, remind us daily of our own baptismal promises to love, to serve and obey you for the rest of our days. At the beginning of this new day, Lord, we pray that you will fill your church throughout the world with your Holy Spirit. Mindful that we worship and gather in many different places and in various circumstances. We pray, Lord, for a church that reaches out not just to those who find faith easy, but also to those who struggle as well. We pray, Lord, for a church that is compassionate and loving, forgiving and honest. We pray, Lord, for our diocese and our bishops, for Christopher and Jonathan. We pray for our deanery and all those who serve within it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, please come now with your power into your world and make your loving kindness and peace known and honoured in every land. Mindful of the spread of the virus in places where thousands face severe food shortages, we pray that aid would reach those people who need it. May people of every language, tribe and community be united in solidarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we turn our thoughts to those nearer home and pray for those who are suffering the effects of COVID-19 and any other illnesses. And we continue, Lord, to pray for Ben and for Mimi. We think, Lord, of families whose businesses have been damaged through lack of work. For those who live in fear of where their next paycheck will come from. Those who feel very anxious about the future. Lord, be with them, we pray, that they may know the calmness of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for your people here in Sandersted and Riddlesdown. We remember particularly today Penny O'Meara, Steve Tarvin, Margaret Walker, Blossom White, Gordon and Beryl Myers, Geoffrey Warner, Valerie Canning and Beth Delia. We pray this morning, Lord, for all who struggle with life at this time. And we offer to you our own concerns for those we know and love and for ourselves, for those things which are hard sometimes to share with others. Please, Lord, be a tower of strength amidst shifting sands and fix our hearts on you where peace may be found amidst turmoil and pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life and death, we bring to remembrance those we love but see no longer. May light perpetual shine upon all those as we hand them over into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> oh 
Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do enjoy your day.